Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about why I chose the DIY route in building my home theater instead of hiring a professional. I'll talk about some of my challenges, whether I have any regrets in doing it myself, would I do it again, and would I recommend it to someone else? All from the perspective of someone who had zero experience in any kind of home improvement or room construction. The reason why I chose the DIY route was because all the quotes I was getting to finish my basement were just crazy high. Going into the build, I had no idea what a reasonable estimate would be for my space, so I researched online to get a rough ballpark estimate for a typical build for the dimensions of my space. I wanted some idea of what to expect from a quote, a realistic low, an average, and a high. And to the high, I actually arbitrarily just added on an, an extra 20%. My thinking being there was no way an estimate would be over that. So I reached out to about four or five contractors and honestly, I was really surprised and really disappointed. All were right around or above the maximum, and I accounted for everything I could to get an accurate estimate online, including adding an extra 20% on top of that high, like I said. I couldn't explain the quotes. All I could think was that maybe it's just my area and that's what folks were willing to pay, but that wasn't going to be what I was going to pay. I just wasn't willing to do that. So that's what drove me to do it myself. I focused on only one stage at a time, researched only what was required at that point of the build, and made myself not look forward. I didn't want to get overwhelmed or discouraged by the scope of what I had to do, so I narrowed my focus for each individual stage of the build. I researched online, watched countless how-to videos, and called my county when I had questions and to check the code requirements. And I'm not sure how it is in other areas, but in my county, they were really super responsive and pretty patient with all my questions. My only concern through the build was just not knowing what I didn't know. Everything seemed pretty straightforward, and if I had a question or ran into an issue, I could easily find the answer. But as someone who never did this before, I was concerned I'd miss something that I didn't realize was required by code or that would keep the walls from falling down. But worrying wasn't going to finish the room. So I started framing, which I thought seemed pretty simple, and honestly, it really was. I've never done framing before beyond putting together some furniture. I'd never actually driven a screw into wood, but this was an easy and fairly quick part of the project. Next up was electrical, which I knew I was not going to do. I did hire a company for that, but I learned a lot about electrical, enough that if I had to do it again, I might consider doing it myself, maybe. I did have to redo all the receptacles because the electrician installed all white receptacles into my home theater. That was not at all his fault. It didn't even strike me until much later that they needed to be black, but it wasn't a big deal. And I also installed a smart switch, which was really easy. It's just a matter of following the directions and screwing in a few wires. I ran the speaker wire next, again, pretty quick and easy. The insulation was next. I used rock wool and that material is pretty stiff and easily slides in and fits snug between studs and the joists. I did learn the hard way after the first day, wear long sleeves and gloves, wear a mask and wear eye protection. It doesn't shed as much as regular insulation, but I was still pretty itchy after the first day, so I would still recommend some protection. The insulation phase did take some time, and about halfway through, I couldn't wait to be done, but it was pretty easy. Casing the windows and the door jam and the trim were pretty straightforward. The main takeaway in this phase was absolute accuracy and making sure everything was plumb and square. Else I would end up with doors that didn't close properly or windows that looked off. There are prefabricated jams and casings, but it was cheaper and easier for me just to make them myself. A saw, drill, a level, some shims, and attention to detail, and that's really all that was needed. The entire drywall phase was the worst experience. Lifting those sheets and aligning them properly is not fun, especially me having to do this alone and it being my first time, it was a very long, frustrating, and exhausting phase of the build. The sheets weren't especially heavy, but they did have some weight and they were a bit awkward. And I didn't have to be super delicate with them, but I did have to be mindful of how I was handling them so they didn't break or crack. Um, a drywall lift is an absolute must. I got the cheapest one that I could find and that worked just fine. 
Taping and mudding and sanding was just a messy, tedious, brutal process. I made so many early mistakes because like I said, I'd never done this before. Fortunately, mistakes could be corrected. I could retape or remud or sand it down, but that all took more time, more effort, more material and more frustration. Experience definitely helps here. Ultimately, it got done, but just some warning, if you're going the DIY route, this was by far the longest and most frustrating phase of the build for me. Paint was next, really nothing difficult about that. I hired a company to install the carpet. No way I was doing that myself. I did carpet the riser, but for my room, I left that to the professionals. So it would be nice and neat and they were done in no time. Then the only thing left were baseboards. Cutting the angles accurately for the corners took a few attempts and I ended up with more wasted material than I hoped, but I eventually got it. I cut everything to fit, painted them and nailed them into place. Really nothing too difficult here. Ultimately, I'm glad I went DIY and I do it again every time. There's just too much savings in it. As difficult as it was when I was done, the sense of accomplishment and having learned and picked up some knowledge and skills, I think was really a great value to me. And I like the reassurance that I know exactly what was done. I'm proud to sit in this room and know beyond the carpet and some electrical, I did this. It makes the room that much more special to me. Would I recommend others to go the same route? Well, if you have the budget for it and you can find a good contractor at a reasonable price, I would say just get a professional to do it. But if you are on a tight budget or if you have the budget but could use the funds elsewhere, I would recommend considering DIY, especially if you're already pretty handy. If I could do this with zero experience by myself, then I think most people can do it if you have the patience and time to do so. I would highly suggest finding a buddy or hiring an extra hand. And lastly, just be smart and safe. Do the research to make sure you're doing the job the right way and that you're safe while working and that the room itself is a safe place for you and your family and friends as you're enjoying your room. As always, please leave your comments or questions down in the comment section below. And if you will, a like would be very much appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And thank you. Have a good day.